Contaminated runways. In Park Cat, a runway is considered to be contaminated when more than 25% of the runway surface is covered with one of the following elements. A water film or slush or loose snow, equivalent to more than three millimeters of water. Compacted snow, a solid mass which may not be compacted further. Ice, including wet ice. So a runway covered with four millimeter deep water is said to be contaminated. In Park Cat, a runway is considered to be wet when it is covered with a quantity of water or slushy snow, less than or equal to the equivalent of three millimeters of water. The amount of surface moisture is sufficient to make it reflective, but does not create large stagnant sheets of water. It is considered to be damp when its surface is not dry and when surface moisture does not give it a shiny appearance. The presence of dynamic hydroplaning depends primarily on the depth of the standing water on the runway. Viscous hydroplaning occurs primarily if the runway is covered with a thin film of water and is very smooth and dirty. The touchdown areas located at both ends of the runways are typical sites for the appearance of viscous hydroplaning. For an aeroplane with a tyre pressure in PSI or bar, there is a risk of dynamic hydroplaning as soon as the height of the water equals the depth of the tyre grooves. The hydroplaning speed in knots may be calculated using the following two formulae. VH hydroplaning speed is 33 multiplied by the square root of the tyre pressure in bar or hydroplaning speed is equal to nine times the square root of the tyre pressure in PSI. So for example, looking on the left hand side of the table, with a tyre pressure of 8 bar, use the formula with 33 multiplied by the tyre pressure in bar. Take the square root of 8, multiply this by 33 to get 96. If the tyre pressure is given in PSI, use the other formula, VH equals 9 multiplied by the square root of the tyre pressure in PSI. So, for a tyre pressure of 206 PSI, take the square root of 206 and multiply it by 9 to get 129. For a given aircraft and runway contamination, Increased pressure altitude will increase the hydroplaning speed. If the airworthiness documents or the flight manual do not show any additional correction factor for landing performance determination on a wet runway, the required landing distance computed for a dry runway must be increased by 15%. When landing on a flooded runway and in heavy rain, increase the approach speed land firmly in order to obtain a firm contact of the wheel with the runway. Immediately land the nose gear. Systematically deploy all the lift dumping devices. To carry out a safe approach in heavy rain, it is necessary to increase the approach speed because the rain affects the lift by deteriorating the boundary layer. Item D of a snow tan gives the cleared length of a runway in metres. If this is less than the published length, it is reported in plain language at item T, the final paragraph. The maximum validity of a snow tan is 24 hours. The braking efficiency is a piece of information presenting itself in the form of a combination of the terms poor, medium, good. A braking action of 0.25 and below reported on a snow tan is poor.